Hi, I'm Anthony Hook, Lib Dem MEP for South East England, and I'm with today Lucy Nasinga, who's my Lib Dem colleague for the East of England. Lucy's got a very important job in the Parliament. She's president or chair of the Jury Committee, which means the Legal Affairs Committee of the Parliament. And Lucy, you've been very busy recently in relation to the appointment of new commissioners, and Eurosceptics are always claiming that the European Commission is unelected, but that's quite misleading, isn't it? Yes, it is very misleading. Um, they're appointed by their um, national governments. They are actually the equivalent of our ministers mm -hmm. in the UK. Um, and ministers are not elected to those roles mm. either, either. In the UK, ministers are just appointed to those roles mm. by the prime minister, and there's no kind of scrutiny of them whatsoever. In the European Parliament, the, the commission or the ministers are appointed by their national governments, and then there's a huge um, process of scrutiny that they go through by the, the European Parliament, which is what we've just been doing. We start off by scrutinising their financial interests. Mm -hmm. So every commissioner has to put forward their, um, their financial interests for us to check that that doesn't clash with the um, portfolio they've been allocated to make sure that they haven't got any vested interests that mm -hmm. they're going to be supported. I would really love to see UK ministers having to go yeah. through the same process of, having, of checking how their financial interests match up against what they're being responsible for in Parliament. So that would be things like what assets they own, what incomes they have, and have there Absolutely. been any any problems with any of the nominees in relation to that? Yeah, we've taken the process very seriously in the mm. jury committee. So we asked for more information from about 10 of the commissioners who were appointed. Um, mm. A number of those, it was just looking in more detail about what they told us about their assets. Mm -hmm. There were quite a few of them where we said, actually, we, we're not sure that you should be holding those shares or that particular business interest because it could at least be perceived mm. as um, you having a vested interest there. So there were quite a few who we made recommendations that they should divest themselves of various um, investments that they've got and they've done that and then there were two who we just felt that their um, financial situation was such that actually it was going to be very difficult for them to have be perceived as being impartial mm. throughout the process so those two have been rejected by the jury and committee. that was the nominees from Hungary and Hungary and Romania. And Romania. So those the different, different situations in each case right. but in each case it was difficult to see how they could be perceived as entirely impartial given the position mm. that they were in. And those two countries now will be putting forward new candidates, won't they? Yes, we're yeah. waiting to hear who, who they're going to put forward. And then in October, when we're in Strasbourg, all MEPs together in plenary, the College of Commissioners, uh, the whole group, will have to be voted on by us and we can vote for them or against them. That's right. So we're waiting to see who those two new will be, new ones will be that were rejected by the jury committee's finance checking. But in between, there's also a very rigorous process of um, that the whole parliament goes through mm. of looking at the skills and knowledge mm. that the commissioners have for their portfolios. So this would be, it's a three hour grilling. Mm. It's quite a substantial process um, by what are in effect the select committees of this mm. parliament grilling that um, commissioner to make mm. sure that we feel they're up to the job mm. um, I would again I would really love to see that before cabinet ministers mm. were appointed they get grilled by select committees to see that they really have the knowledge of the sub of the area that they're um, being put forward to, to manage absolutely well I can say yesterday I was at Lieber committee which is the justice committee and Vera Jarova uh, who uh, is going to have her own fundamental rights and justice. She's already a commissioner. She was back and she did very well. She's very confident yep. and clearly knows her area. But it was, you're right, an intense grilling. And ministers in the UK aren't subject to anything like that, are they? No, it's purely the whim of the Prime Minister in the UK. Mm. Um, and it just goes to show just how much more um, rigorous in some ways the European Parliament is. Yeah, indeed. And there's some suggestions. Now, the UK has refused, Boris Johnson has refused to nominate a candidate, even though we're still in the EU and lots of people expecting we're going to be in the EU for an extension after October. And so there's a risk that the, the UK is left without a voice. But there's some suggestions that he's going to nominate Nigel Farage just to kind of cause a problem. But actually, the joke's going to be on Boris Johnson, isn't it? Well, I think if he nom nominated Nigel Farage, um, the jury committee would certainly have um, a great deal of interest in Nigel Farage's financial interests. Yeah. So we would be wanting to look into that before we decided whether or not he was going to be um, somebody who's, whose integrity was such that we could support him. And even if he were to get through that stage, 
then the Parliament would have to vote on whether Farage became a commissioner. And I think we can say the Parliament would vote him down pretty quickly, wouldn't it? Well, I think it would depend what portfolio was. And actually, mm. there are some subjects that Nigel Farage knows about, so maybe we could grill him on those. But it would depend on what portfolio he was put forward for. Mm. It is slightly difficult to see which, which constructive European portfolio could be allocated to Nigel Farage uh, without him being... Um, definitely um, rejected mm. by the Parliament because he, he just doesn't believe in the values and ideals of this place um, no. which given um, that those are values and ideals of um, rule of law and democracy mm. and um, minority rights uh, I think I think it would be it would be an interesting grilling and I, I've picked up that Britain's current commissioner Julian King who's come before the Libra committee that I'm on he's very respected across yes, the EU and there have been a he lot really of previous is. British commissioners who've been really respected yep. and really influential. So we're losing our voice by Boris Johnson refusing we to censor We absolutely are. And we've lost so much respect in this institution mm. um, and, and with our neighbouring countries throughout this Brexit process by the um, inability of our government to come up with realistic and sensible proposals and then um, back them. I mean, it, it is the whole process has been such a mess uh, and this institution um, I think is finding it difficult, as, as are many in the public mm. in the UK, to understand what's happened to the British government, which used to be a very widely respected mm. um, and and thought extremely competent, and yes, not indeed. anymore. Yeah. And my, finally, my, my perception is that if we succeed in stopping Brexit and have a new government, there could be that re-engagement and a regaining of respect and influence very, very quickly. Yes, I think that the European Union absolutely stands ready to um, to work in a really constructive mm. way um, if if they have a partner government in the UK to work with. But at the moment, they just don't have that partner. Great. Lucy, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.